Okay, there's two more, uh, two more examples uh, using absolute value inequalities that I want to look at. And the reason I want to look at them is that they are weird. Okay? First example. Negative one-half times the absolute value of x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 5. All right, let's solve it. Uh, what's happening to x? We're adding 2, then taking the absolute value, then multiplying times negative one-half. So what are we going to do to solve this? We're going to divide by negative one-half. Dividing by negative one-half is the same thing as multiplying by negative 2, so let's do that. Uh, multiplying by negative 2 here, we get absolute value of x plus 2. Multiplying by negative 2 means we change the direction of our inequality, and multiplying by negative 2 uh, times 5, that would give us negative 10, okay? So now we have the absolute value of x plus 2 is less than or equal to a number, and I would normally think, okay, that means it's going to be between two numbers, except stop. Absolute value, always positive. Less than or equal to negative 10? No, it's not. Okay? The lowest this can possibly be is 0. It can't be less than or equal to negative 10, so we just stop and say, no solution, empty number line, and x cannot be found anywhere between negative infinity and infinity. Okay? So, now let's look at this one. 4 times the absolute value of 3x minus 7 plus 6 is greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so what's happening to x? Multiply times 3 minus 7, then taking the absolute value, then multiply times 4, then adding 6. So, quite a bit. So, let's undo all these steps, starting with the last one. We're going to undo the 6, and we get 4 times the absolute value of 3x minus 7, greater than or equal to negative 5. Then we're going to divide both sides by 4, and uh, we get the absolute value of 3x minus 7. Is, now, do I need to change the direction of that inequality? No. Why not? Because I divide it by a positive number. Okay? It's only when you divide by a negative number or multiply times a negative number, then you change the direction of the inequality. Otherwise, don't mess with it. Okay? So that's still greater than or equal to. Negative uh, 5 divided by 4, I'll write this as negative 1.25. Now, stop and say, hold it. The smallest this can possibly be is zero, because it's an absolute value. This says greater than or equal to, one, to negative 1.25. Uh, yeah. Zero, or anything bigger, is automatically greater than or equal to negative 1.25. That means it doesn't matter what x is. This is always going to be true. So that means x can be any real number. Okay? And on the number line, we shade in the whole dang thing, and we say x is somewhere between negative infinity and positive infinity, or we just say x is somewhere in the set of real numbers. Okay? So, to summarize, if you find yourself saying x has to be less than a negative number, no, it can't be. If you find yourself saying, and I said x, something, okay, the absolute value of something is less than or equal to a negative number, no, it can't be that. If you're saying the absolute value of something has to be greater than or equal to a negative number, or greater than a negative number, yeah, it has to be, okay? So that's how you can get this, uh, this answer of no solution or any real number.